literature for many years, so it just uh, somehow just put it in new, new views, new perspectives, if you like. Uh, so let, let, let's start with a very basic thing about subjectivity <coughs> transforms. is given by the convolution product, uh, normalized by uh, giving g of o to volume 1. And uh, then for the dual groups, This is a um, complex deductive group uh, that was constructed combinatorially uh, by uh, deciding that the loop beta of G hat G one of G. And it's um, main property that there is a isomorphic algebra, the set of isomorphisms. Non G hat that uh, um, involve the adjoint action of G hat. So with this, uh, uh, we can classify uh, unramified representation of G f. So if pi uh, is irreducible, <coughs> admissible representation of G, so with a non zero. Then uh, this algebra H will act on that vector. And so um, there is this unique, <coughs> uh, semi simple, but you basic class, <coughs> sigma in G hat, such that. Uh, Trace the phi on pi. So, I mean, obviously, what I mean trace, but you went for phi inside Hector algebra that project everything to the, to the, to the non zero zero invariant vector. So, you can say trace is equal to the <coughs> evaluated C. So, so, we can this by phi, map to phi t. So now um, let um, rho for G head to G and be a rho be a um, irreducible representation. 
algebraic representation of this complex reductive groups. Um, <coughs> then following Landers, <coughs> can define this local factor uh, by L factor, whereby the L S rho pi, maybe I can put V somewhere, the local factor. Sigma is the LS parameter. So, um, so we can obviously. So uh, Q is the the, um, the cardinal of the residual fins of the local fins. So we can see this whole expression <coughs> as a function psi tilde of s is equal to this. <coughs> right. So now we define this. Um, so now psi tilde is going to be a, a, a rational function of g tilde, g hat, which is um, invariant. And the uh, um, and the G hat, the term from the G hat. So this is it. It belongs to the localization of, of this community algebra. So we may ask if there any function psi on G that go to psi tilde. You mean psi tilde of sigma? Sigma sigma. Thank you. Question is, uh, is is there psi leaving some localization or some function on GF that map to this psi tilde? There seems to be a reason why a question to be asked. And mainly with the view that we that I'm going to talk later, that we, um, we would like to um, define some operators on, so that the, the trace on some uh, automorphic representations is the L function. Right? So this is the, this, this psi would be the, the local S function. We need to put the trace formula. So we need to understand this psi. So let's first do it formally. <coughs> so let's uh, expand psi tilde as a formal series. <coughs> and it has a very nice expansion. Uh, so we have a determinant of one. Uh, Minus rho sigma q to the minus s minus one would be sum from n to zero to infinity. The trace of sin n rho sigma q to the minus n s. So, so obviously we would like to look at this at psi <coughs> n. So Psi tilde. So sorry, I would put S somewhere. So there must be an S. And this depends on S. Right? So this is a function depend on like a family of function depend on complex parameter S. So now psi tilde S the sigma would be a formal series. Psi n. 
upside-tin diode here. An upside-tin diode is, is nice, it's nice for that. It is a, a regular 400 G head with G invariant. So psi n is, uh, uh, so psi n belong to C G head. So you can just um, just put some of formulae of psi f to be some n equal to zero to infinity psi of n. Where psi of n is in Hebrew algebra, which uh, involves a very transform of psi t of n. So this is so we we need this psi t of s to be. Um, Infinite sum of uh, Hector functions. So, so it's not hard to prove that if uh, if a uh, real property of S is big enough, this sum will converge to this series. But this is not very, very pleasant. We somehow we would like to put ourselves in some situation where it just going to go the right away. Right. So, so we you restrict our uh, attention to some some special situation. We in some sense be enough uh, in which. Uh, so the series converge uh, always. So in particular, we would have this, this function psi to be a sum of psi n of divided by phi. Some trick in the setup so that this function is well defined. So this will be a well defined function that will be uh, zero by invariant, but not for not compactly supported. <coughs> okay, so let me explain this setup. So This set will be considered by Bradman and Kester. So we, um, we would like to have uh, G given with the, the, the determinant map to the M. And the determinant is kind of automated, but why not? G prime it makes some, some simple groups <laughs> and and so to say that you can pick up a psi s from psi uh, by the so that we want that the um, the choice of psi s so psi s it is um, that is not defined yet but it just would write only what you would like to have first. On pi would be the trace of psi by pi twisted by the terminal to the s. Right? Somehow then you can forget about psi s, you just look at psi and twisted by the terminal. Right. So for that, we, um, we need to think a bit what, what you want to do to, to get this, and, and, and then we're going to do on psi. <coughs> On the dual side. So 
So this GM becomes in the center of G hat. <coughs> Remember that the whole setup comes from a representation. And um, in order to, to, for this formula to work out, the condition you want to make that is to this, uh, the row rest to GM induce identical map from GM to GM. Mm -hmm. So the assumption is. to the center of GM of G hat is the identical map. To the center of GM of G and So we assume this. I have a check, but I, I believe that I mean, in many health functions can be put into this framework. So under this assumption, it's easy to see that similar <coughs> of rho that map G to Gn sim n of the rho. With a respect to Gn is the uh, nth power of n e to the t to the t on the center. And so um, when you um, when you look at it, um, Sadaki in verse, so this is like that. Uh, uh, the the support of the psi t in the n, psi n, uh, the satellite child form of this uh, sim and row has support contained in the set of G and G of F such that the valuation of the determinant of G is L. So in particular, Cn, the Cn, the Psi N, L, this one So it's not going <coughs> to add them. So we have to put psi, psi makes sense as function. And it's easy to check that this uh, equality does hold. Right? Or it was set up for that. So, I mean, all this sounds very familiar, of course, because this is just uh, somehow the uh, generalization of Gordon Moore Jacquet and Magawa's principal L functions. So, the main example is this uh, principal L function. In this case, we know that the, some of the, uh, the function psi n is actually very simple. In this case, you know that psi n 
in the characteristic function of the set of metrics G in uh, Gn lamb of F. It was set with the, met the integral matrices Mn of O. Maybe I put Gn here. And so that is integral matrix such as the valuation and determinant of G. <coughs> So obviously this psi would be simply the characteristic function of, of this notion of that set. So the question is how um, is there any um, way to understand this function psi <coughs> in more general case, right? Uh, this case is very simple. So how how you could say something about this function in in more general case? So, so in particular, one can ask a question: What is to be question is what would be plays a role of the matrices. The space of matrices in general. So what turn out is a very useful answer. Uh, also was mainly given by a theory of uh, of monoid, of uh, algebraic <coughs> monoid. So now uh, <coughs> you can the well, the answer you can construct. Okay, so let uh, for doing that I need to review the theory monoid. Now we need to uh, okay review of this theory algebraic monoid. It's only very complicated for me, but I learned from Glenn. It's just a particular case, very good variety. So this, uh, in this monoid case, the, this was uh, studied by people like uh, uh, Arenda, Tucha, and Bilbao. So we are going to use many very nice classification theory about Bilbao. Monoid depends on row, right? Depends on depends on row. Depends on row, yes. Okay, so um, so in this setting, I, I will consider the uh, G prime um, semi simple group. Um, and this is fixed. This setup somehow we, we keep the semi-simple group fixed and you allow the allow some torus in the core center. So we study the category of monoid <coughs> is uh, uh, a pair of GM. Uh, G is a uh, reductive group. We give a little exact sequence so G prime. of some torus by, by G prime. 
then you want to now we enlarge um, and uh, m is uh, m is uh, a fine bedding a fine normal equivalent bedding G. So that means we have this closed opening emulsion, open embedding, uh, such that uh, the, the left and right action of G on itself. <coughs> Extend to N. So we can extend actions. And under the assumption it is for phi and normal, you can, it's easy to prove that after it's equivalent to say that. G, G cross G. Yeah, G cross G yeah, up and G. Yeah. Right there. That's the guy. G, G cross G. I think no, left and right Ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My, my eyes are bad. Yeah. Yeah. So, so M has the structure of angiotic model. So with the action, you can multiply G with an end of M, or M in the G. And the, the two things can merge together to multiply M with M. So this is a theorem, right? This is a theorem, if you like, but this is fairly easy to So these monoid structures may be important, but I mean I see no use of it up to now. That is my concern. So following Winber, we can uh, look at this uh, M. We look at the uh, invariant quotient of M by G prime. So all the function on M that are invariant under uh, the semi-simple group. And this is A. That is phi invariant. Phi, 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 on each side? On each side. I mean, this is equivalent. In this, for this lecture, you could have written one side, both sides. Right? And so we have G, and then T. So G up on the left and right on M, so T up on A. So A is a total priority. Of Taurus T. And um, the nice category of monoid is all uh, for which this map is flat. So it's, it's a good uh, abelianization map. So, uh, so GM is a flat monoid. The abelianization map is with, is <coughs> with uh, reduced geometric fiber. to window there exists a universal uh, flat monoid for a given semi simple G prime. So G prime has to be fixed and then you can extend 
can choose many extensions of torus basic, right? So for each G and V and M, a normal equation, then there is a big mm -hmm. universal one, which is M is there. Yes, it's a big M, yeah. And, and all moment with, with a given G prime uh, come for that moment by race change. Yeah, yeah. I will mean, say it more precisely. So let me recall the construction of uh, of the universal moment. And actually, when you look at the construction of the universal moment, you see why it really matters for the for for separate transform or hyper algebra as well. So let for that let's assume that G prime is so this is not serious, but I just assume G prime is simply connected. The other group basically just checks it to A and by the center. Assume this <coughs> and T prime so, and then uh, <coughs> and the group G, this universal group, group G plus, is G prime times T prime mod R by Z prime. But T prime is a maximum torus. Prime and Z prime is uh, center. Split, split, or else, I guess. Yes, yeah, so we will call complex numbers. So. Uh, yeah. 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 You work on the. <coughs> oh, no, no, you look at yeah, this split. Yes. Okay, I'm looking at split. So everything you do is split. <coughs> so Z prime is center and up on. Opting diamond only on G prime times T prime. And now, I mean, I choose maybe a big G prime or a subgroup of T of G prime, and that uh, would give rise to the set of simple groups, and one, and one R. And they have a set of corresponding uh, fundamental weight. And so we have on, assuming this guy is interconnected, then we have this representation rho i from gi to gm gi. Have its weight omega i and and so the the, 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 the claim that you can extend uh, uh, <coughs> extend this to a homomorphism that I call. So alpha i also have this alpha i from t prime to gm. So we have alpha i and rho i, but I want to extend both to uh, to g plus to product of gm to the r time. So this z prime look like a, a burden, but actually when you put it here, uh, you see that there's only way to extend this. There's the correct thing so that it matches. So, so there's only one formula that works. <coughs> Alpha i is just obvious guy. Is alpha i would be uh, trivial on, on the g prime factors. So I had to write a formula for rho i plus. 
rho i plus of of t and g would be omega i acting on on t minus one w zero and rho i and g. So this this thing looks a little bit weird, but this is the only way that makes this formula. <coughs> And so we um, define uh, the univolve I'm going to read M plus to be the long knot, the long one. This is longest in the yes. So you put T minus 1 to compensate this, okay. and then have to make it dominant <coughs> to be the normalization. So this is necessary in, in some small characteristic of the closure of the image of rho alpha plus rho plus and v plus e a r time put up and <coughs> First of all, this is an uh, this is an embedding. Okay, this is an embedding. It's close embedding to this group, and then you can extend this group into some kind of all this monoid that is GM embed to GA and GNVI embed into the plane matrices and into the, the, the closure of that. So you mean have lower pluses there uh, when you've got upper pluses? Okay, there? It's, it's upper pluses. Okay. So this is this becomes a monoid for the other one. So this is the monoid of, of G plus. M plus is a fine value. Fifty bar in M value. G plus. And G plus has uh, Sequence to T plus. A T plus is almost the maximum torus, but not quite because they have the center. This is the maximum torus of the adjunct. Okay. 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 Isomorphic to GM to the R with the, with the, with the simple roots. Okay, so. So before studying Wienberg theorem, just let me say that why this monoid is is, uh, is somehow very natural. Uh, so so let me come back to the question. Uh, so let G to be in, in my G of prime. This, this uh, group has Catholic composition. <coughs> the T is in the uniformizing parameter of the local fields. So this T lambda of G of O, so lambda in some dominant covet. So I I would like to have some um, um, algebraic ways to, to, to say if they have G in, in what lab sub double course that I would for it. So I'm just saying this universal monoid give you an answer for that. Right. So uh, um, so first of all there is a little bit uh, uh, so then we we'll write a claim. A claim is uh, uh, so claim. <coughs> I'm 
wissen wie man mehr, das muss man schon wieder lang sagen. Wie lang zu some other closer of what is set on the lambda prime less than lambda in the usual order, if and only if <coughs> you look at G and you now you put this lambda into the M of T, so it's T lambda, right? This becomes an element of G plus F, right? And this condition is equivalent to this guy. So let this guy actually belong to. <coughs> right? So uh, you belong to. The, look at this very. This, I mean, you would get convinced and look at G and then case. In general case, how, how can you say if G belongs to some double coset? You look at the minors, right? The minors have to be have uh, denominators bound by something, right? And bound by something that means when you multiply by some appropriate power of T, that becomes integers. That's exactly what we are doing here. You multiply this by this, and that becomes integers. So that would lie integers that mean. <coughs> Uh, when the reduction modulo t, that may not be in G, but it's in the system in the closure of this. It becomes a different matrix. So we just like a topological operation to do this. But this just reflects how this monoid really has a good control on the mechanical part. Okay, so now let me come back to this M plus. <coughs> so we must say that every monoid uh, for every flat monoid. <coughs> there exists a, a map from A, there is a map from there is a map, a map of toric varieties. The map T to the T plus, A to A plus. So that means a map of torus, homomorphism of torus, that can extend to the toric varieties. And such that G uh, is, uh, is, is just a base chain, so So you upon the fat monoids need to come from <coughs> something fairly simple. I mean the morphism of the toric varieties. Okay, so that's nice. Um, so let's come back to our, our setup. So in our setup, we have the, our group is perhaps simple, uh, special forms in a special setup. Special setup. You have a group is zero G prime two G 
Gm. So the torus is Gm. It's not any torus. This is Gm. And so probably if the, the, the monoid P1 uh, must have been in P1. I mean, this guy all this choice you can make. But that is the, the thing you can under control. <coughs> Construct such a monoid, you have to construct a map. So it's just the equivalent. You construct a map for lambda from GM to, to AR. Right? AR is, is an A plus. In the Abelian Nation universal monoid. Oh, sorry, this is GMR. This is T plus. <coughs> So that uh, extends the moment. There's two varieties. So now you can ask what does it mean that lambda extends to the correct varieties? And the answer is fairly simple, it just means that lambda has to be dormant. Dominant co character. T plus. <coughs> and so if you have a representation two on two, the irreducible representation of G hat, you would have the highest weight. So lambda would be a, a GN T prime, and then you have, you have lambda from GN to this T plus. So for every representation of dual group, you get a monoid. But somehow there is a little bit of discrepancy. You get somehow more monoid than the representation. I don't really know why. I mean, there, is, there should be a way to, to fix this discrepancy. I haven't worked on it, but I... But in but this construction, this, there seems to be more monoid than the representation. But I mean, for, for, for now, it doesn't really matter. So the whole so now, I, by this, I will call F, M rho, be the monoid construct <coughs> is above. Right. And that just by um, the discussion I uh, on the Relation between the universal monoid and the cut-on composition. One can prove that the uh, the support of um, <coughs> support of cyan, right? Cyan is the uh, spectral function whose Fourier whose Saturday transform is the C main row. It's exactly G E. GF and M rho of all such that evaluation is the total of G is <coughs> F. It's included. It's already equal, but I mean, I mean it's okay to say included. And then support of psi would be the features. So it's exactly the same as for principal and functions. Uh, you can cut up a monoid so that uh, the sort of psi you want to study is support in, in the integral point of that monoid. But of course, this is the point that this function is no longer the characteristic function. It's, it's rather a complicated function. So we want to understand what is. So now we have the <coughs> psi is somehow the function that become. You want a function of this. Very much understand what is psi.
So here, um, uh, there has been some um, um, so, uh, of course, there is a, uh, the, the principal case, principal L function for GLN. Uh, this is Tamagawa. And there has been um, another case that has been calculated a long time ago, this uh, case for CPT groups. Satake, well, Satake was the first to look at it, but he Sorry. didn't get the right function. You look at that, okay. So Satake and Shimura, I think independently, but I'm not quite sure. Satake Shimura. Maybe when we read both. I mean, anyway, this, uh, I think this, this, the two cases are somehow reported in the obscure chapters in McDonald. Yep, yeah, but they didn't get the right function. But that, this is all, it's all so. Satake and Shimura thought it was, they just looked at the characteristic of <laughs> Yes, yes, they did this. So it's, where we did that wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they stopped. And they, they, were so, they were so depressed by what they found that they just stopped looking. <laughs> and so they, uh, and Vin had made some, some excess calculation. All sympathetic groups are SP4 or something? Well, I, have all I, I, groups. I have computer results and approved for GSP4. So computer results for GSP2M for small n, and so, yeah. so, I, so in the case of GSP4, we know exactly what it is. Uh -huh. And also, uh, recently, there's uh, when, when, the Yeah. Some result, I think, before we talk this about it. This is what the principal law function? Hmm? No. GSPN with what, GSP4? With a standard representation. With standard, standard re representation, yeah. It's a, it's a very special case. <coughs> in general, it's quite a complicated. Yeah. Function. When, when we leave, we'll explain some other formula which is related. Okay, so now, so we know that it's, it's fairly complicated functions, uh, which is not one. And so, uh, people at the uh, in geometric training, if you thought one should be the IC, so that is the big uh, So now let. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what is that symbol before the word jets? So jets are four. monoid. Sorry, it's a four. Four. Oh, it's a four. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not a four, it's a four. <laughs> okay. So I look at the space on jets, on monoid. So the L plus the M. So I, I forget the row, but the row will be fixed. I'm not going to keep with a row uh, of any ring R. Oh, oh by the way, I, I must mention that these M rows have also been considered in paper. But I'm not going to catch that. So, now, now let's look at this spread of, of, of jets. Uh, <coughs> so all the point of M is. What, what's oh, R? Sorry? Oh, M, is anything? M is M rows. Oh. No, here, here it can be anything. R, no, R, what is R? R is just the ring. What's the R? R is any angle. Any ring. So this is the representable functors. It's not a problem. So this is a productive element. So um, we can look at this uh, as a M row of M plus of O as a K point of the jet space. <coughs> the case is a residue thinner. Did you just assume equal? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, it's uh, equal cut is from that, yes. I just move that from equal cut in this case. <coughs> and I would like to formulate a candidate, though it's not really a candidate because it not, does not make sense. Is that the psi is given by the trace of formulas? I see intersection complex of, of this loop space up to some normalization. So it is not a real condition because I don't know how to define the IC of this. So this is not finite dimensionals. And this I don't really see how I can make sense of this. So you can't just take a direct limit of, of no I can't I can because there's a point that the, the map is not smooth. So I, mean, I don't know how, what that means. Maybe some people may better <laughs> know how to define it, but I just don't know how to define it. No, see, I mean, there's all this case. M is smooth. Right? M is smooth, then on the transition map is very nice. Just, uh, so the, the loop, uh, D plus 1, D plus 1 jet, uh, M, go to D, D M, is a smooth map. It's most objective map. So we just then this somehow this, this the whole thing is smooth, it's just the constant functions. And the, in this case the IC of LM plus each of the constant shift, the psi and the, the psi is one. So this is a principle cut. You know the computation show there's some stability. All the, all the computations show there's some stability here. Some stability, yeah, but I don't know how to, then not how to. This, this is, I mean, I think the, the main difficulty is, yeah, I don't explain why, you actually have to define this. One you define properly, probably this, not difficult to prove. I explain why. Uh, um, somehow this, I mean, this loop space has been studied, I mean, extensively, very right? like, it's a pain, it goes up, theta function, for example, multiple integrations. But some, so, far, so far, no, nobody did attempt to define this IC as, as, no, as, as far as I know. Um, I think um, there's a paper by Greenberg and Kashka, that at least on, on complex numbers, they prove that this locally, any point of L plus M have a neighborhood, isomorphic to something finite dimensional. <coughs> Time uh, formal disk to some even powers. So probably that gives the IC. But they do not prove they are compatible, but they do depend on choice. So, so I mean, and the question, I think the definition is still open. Um, but, also, so um, what you care about is the, the local <coughs> IC, right? I mean, the actual global, global IC is not. Sure, yeah, but I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I would like to have this play to work with and something, I don't know, I mean. There are nice finite type models of this. Of this finite type model, yeah, but they, do they compatible in some? I think so, yeah. Maybe we can. Okay. Anyway. But there's some very, well, when, um, on the papers of of um, like old paper by Martin Greenberg and they they explain some very um, interesting features of this. For example, for this map, so this is some that look really bad. So this map, my name is not smooth. This is not subjective, right? It's, but um, there is something that look a little bit better. In this um, instead of looking at, at uh, So uh, instead of looking at this, this space, <coughs> instead of looking at this, we can look at something smaller. 
if I mean the image of this in this. It's not subject this to this image. And uh, Green will prove that this is actually the image is only given by in some finite uh, maybe t to the t to the or something. So the image is the same as the image of this value. And also, so let call it M prime. M prime, uh, M, LD prime M to be the image. So this is. You can prove some general result or just for my again? You didn't know the mind. No, no, this is for anything. It is for the algebraic properties. Uh, so this is, is it pretty bad because it's just locally closed subset? But some, some, some for the reason I don't really understand. So then you look at this. And this looks like a nice thing. It looks like smooth. I mean, you can decompose it into cyclones of that with five measures of the dimensions. So maybe that is explain somehow the something I see but had to do with this instead of this. But this is not, it's not algebraic variety, so I don't really know. Okay, so let's stop with this. So now let me try to explain some kind of finite dimension models to this. So, So I want there's a, um, another support for this local temperature. So let's see the uh, smooth projective curve. So again, G is in on, I put myself in this special setting. Some algebraic variety that you will see. Then you can make sense of what is uh, <coughs> uh, M morphisms. <laughs> what is it? You just have this, it's just some point of M. So M is given with. Uh, Outside of G times G, right? Is right. So you can twist M by by this E prime times E. So on the left, you twist by E, on the right, you by E prime. Then uh, you get some um, some bundle. So this is a, a bundle. Just uh, a section of this bundle, uh, M morphisms. <coughs> it's just with a set of global sections. So we think about the ob obvious case again. We have, uh, we have G and M, and M is a met is space matrices. If you treat a split matrix on the left by one vector bundle and the right by another vector bundle, then the global system is just 
the morphism of the W2 derivative. So we should define what is the formula. What I mean by the map from E by 2E prime, uh, is, is, so M morphism. Right? So you can compose. You can compose <coughs> M morphisms <coughs> because M has, is monoid. And so now I just like to impose some condition right away. So M morphism uh, that would be mean that this section and uh, generically uh, so phi is set so phi uh, so we consider only M morphisms whose genetic fibers arise in G. So that means genetically had to be on azomorphisms. <coughs> so now we look at our smoothness space X. It's very similar space, you look at T and C. E is is a G bundle on C and phi is now a M morphism from E0 to T. M morphism. What's E0? Sorry? What is E0? E0 is the triple bundle. Now this, this is space X, but uh, the way to see it, first of all, you, 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 you observe that it has uh, E induced a GM bundle, L, because it has map G to GM, right? and phi induced a depth of phi would be a section. This map, this X just map to the space of, of uh, C map, the space of L and A, where L is a light bundle and A is a local section. And here I assume we, with these conditions, generically life in G, <coughs> that means A in D. Uh, so A in non zero, then L have a degree. <laughs> and so we can, uh, we can uh, decompose X into some XN. In the metric CN, which is the nth metric power of the curve. <coughs> okay, so this, this is what I see as a uh, global model that like is uh, uh, loop space. Why? Because we can. Uh, have a map, you have, have a map from X to um, for every point B and C. Right? So the phi locally that give you a map from in M O. Right? But now there is um, ambiguities with of G option. So they want to get it mapped from M O to G O. So X has a map to the product of G. <coughs> so 
So it's, it's, it's moral in the sense that I morally should be some. It's most in some but I, I don't know how to make sense of it. But at least on the IC, it's exactly what you expect. So that can be proved that uh, um, IC of XN, now if you read, let D some point in CN. So D can be part of the sum of, sum of point PI DI, which PI different from <coughs> DJ. Then you can restrict this IC to uh, the fiber of over D. So let me you now put it this way. <coughs> and it happens that this is in a, this in a, a problem. See? And you can prove that it is just a tensor product of. Uh, of C, D, I, of A, uh, rho, well, I mean, if, so this is um, the, the equivalent purpose of the affine was magnet, and you do the symmetric power and you look at the exterior product. So if it doesn't make sense to you, it doesn't matter. I mean, it just, you, can, you can control this. Uh, and the, the, out, the outcome is the trace of so the on the function, look at this map, let me go that side. Then the trace of the four benders on IC of X is nothing but uh, C put back upon the function sine phi. So exactly what we expect. But, uh, but I mean, you can many times just have this work with global models. That is maybe interesting to get the local spaces. So again, this is not. I mean, this language is look new, but it is barely new in the case of a uh, principal L function. So this model by space. Has been by Lumo in one of the very first papers of Germanic Diamonds. You can look at the paper of Diamonds in the, in the volume dedicated to Madin. I think he's already uh, explained this construction in this okay, this book. Okay, so now. Uh, Now let me explain. Um, so, so this is probably everything I can tell about um, about this function. Uh, what is the statement there? This I C is equal to. Sorry. So you have a you have a somehow singular space, right? Then you have some some smoothly symmetric of the curve, and have the map. It's somehow in it, the situation when you have a simultaneous resolution, somehow. and then the IC of the whole thing, when you restrict to the fibers, it may not be IC, but it's, it's, it's perfect shape. You have some of the IC. And you can you can actually compute in this way, using some kind of resolution. They confirm it the way that if, and I can say that this map is smooth, but I cannot say that you know. I mean, I don't even know what, how to define it, say, so to speak. Okay. So I, I was interested in this function because of this question in, in, in your endoscopic program. No. 
So by the way, Jason, I have one question before to move to global. So what, what about, um, there's a question with nothing to do with this. So the question is, for uh, Rabify, uh, so is a, <coughs> a function uh, psi in the Boston center? <coughs> I mean, a localization of the Boston center. The Boston center. So that uh, can act on representation by the L function. The psi depends on group. <coughs> yes, so that the trace of psi rule on pi is an L function. Maybe S. Okay, one, two. It's a question of ramification or? I mean, for any level ramification. So for the uh, no ramification. So the L, the L can be some, what about epsilon factors? Or? Yeah, they just about L function. Hmm? This is just for L function, the function will be another story. <laughs> so the um, But LS is usually trivial, so this is a, this is a very special question. Why is it trivial? Okay, so we uh, look at this, so we, we still are in our special setup. And now we just, I just add one more choice. Uh, just, um, so so I add in the function thing case C, and I have a, a point infinity in C, and I choose <coughs> uniformizing parameters, and also choose uh, a map from G and to G in the center. So that I can look at this space of. <coughs> and with these extra things, you have finite volumes. So, um, so now let pi be a discrete representation of two, of two. So let me look and me five because I don't have this thing in general. So. Let's just, um, Because this is not a standard function, the U trace formula because it's, it's not unit from an ABU anywhere. But they want to plug this function on there. This, and so um, N S of rho pi would be the trace of psi, this global psi from pi tensor with determinant to the S. So then it makes sense to try to, instead of looking at individual L function, they just look at the whole L2. So, <coughs> so question is to develop a trace formula to, to have a spectral and geometric expansion of this function of psi, of this L2. So we don't always for this question, but as far as I understand the spectral size can be less. Uh, this has been uh, solved with this idea. I finished the lapid. On the geometric side, uh, there was a, a PhD studies of, of maths. <coughs> Seem to deem the KVN two and JN three, and um, 
So that what gives some kind of hope is, uh, well, I've been told by Lapi that this patron size is okay, but it's called geometric size. So the geometric size, the bit function field case, the modulus look, they look very nice. So it's <coughs> on the geometric side, the function fields. There is a nice modulus space. <coughs> so that we hope that because it's, it's difficult, but it's not. It's something that is you can. <coughs> so let me explain in whatever the title that remains. What is the, the modulus space? So this, <coughs> so I, I would like to construct a, um, a mobilized space that would give these functions to <coughs> I think it's convergent. I don't know. I mean, I have to ask. <laughs> I don't. I can't tell what it is. Exact statement. No, I was not it. Okay. You can ask him later. I think. <laughs> okay. So let uh, let me. Ask. So uh, let me call the usual thing. So <coughs> this uh, double quotient, the GI cotomorphic quotient, can be correspond to the category of G balance on C, on the curve C. And now if you want to add this small extra thing, <coughs> well, I'm not sure that my setup is the right one. I, I, I had to choose some kind of funny choice, but I, it's possibly not the setup I that I, I choose. So this is Bandon. Uh, so Bandon uh, on C and plus uh, added isomorphisms. So I decide that V, so if, uh, if V is a G bundle, <coughs> then V is, I just add to my isomorphism with V, twist of infinity. So this is a twisting given by uh, epsilon infinity. This is F and V in the center, I have like a twist of my bundle, I just add this isomorphism. This is the same as a quotient by epsilon A. Okay, so now, um, <coughs> if V is a bandon on G, then I just took right bracket V for the corresponding object in this, in this uh, localized category. And I have, um, so for example, if I can have endomorphism, M endomorphism in the same I defined earlier, of V and V right? would be the limit at n go to infinity of endomorphisms of V go to V infinity. So the more I choose, the more I have morphisms. V and so you should think about vector bundle, right? It's vector bundle, the twist by n infinity. It just is the same, it just uh, <coughs> it makes sense. I think you look at vector bundle it makes sense in this modular set. So your geometric side is look like uh, the space of um, V and V, but V is in this category of uh, epsilon infinity Z. Z A and V is in endomorphisms. 
<coughs> of the graph in itself. So it's, it's a very much like engine vibrations, it's just you object have modified sets. <coughs> and now, with this, you can write M as limit of Mn. Right, Mn, you can forget about this uh, infinite thing. You can become uh, now V, phi, and phi is now an M map from V to V and V. So here, at this point, it's, it's really very much like a cheap vibration. And you can define uh, rich in vibrations. In the same way as in the <coughs> fundamental level of the algebra. <coughs> so what now, what we have to do? So at the level of the finite level of M A, we want to put the I C of uh, of M A. So to work with it, it needs something that is pure comfort sheet to start with. But then you don't know what what is the, to the trade off of the I C of M A. So you want to say that this is more or like less the same as the I C of the X N that I defined earlier. And X N Remember, x n is just you. This one is from trivial factor. Right? <coughs> that I don't want to map. But I claim that this is, should be the same. So this is, uh, uh, this is compatible. And this question is more or less solved, uh, uh, more or less solved by the Lucci. In this PhD theory, so this. I mean, in this setting, it's not done, but I, I firmly believe that the uh, Bucci technique would do this. So now uh, we know the IC of Mn, and take the four minus, we would get to the uh, four minus trade. <coughs> we would give our function psi. So we are okay. So we can work with this IC of Mn. And the trace formulas, uh, then then we have to look at this uh, map. Uh, understand F, F, F star of I, C, of M, N. And so well, somehow, I don't really know, I mean, up to this point, I, I cannot understand what anything I write. Just, uh, you want to look at any theory of like this. So this is basically the, for me, the geometric. Geometric elevations of the choice of the geometric side trace formula. The trace formula for for this funny function psi. And this would be something to like this. So now what we can do with this uh, complicated thing? So first of all, I want to know this. So I read the code, this is a vibration, but in particular, it should have the fibers. This um, Abelian scheme. Okay. And, um, and here, of, obviously, the line of the vibration case, you have, uh, there is a part of it which is finite, and it takes and then has hyperbolic part due to some truncation. And go to a unipotent orbit, that will be tremendously complicated, like the yeah, way I explained. But essentially, what you want to to, to say so uh, to say that the, the this should have been determined. This should be determined by by the genetic fibers. That what what end end up to try to prove that. The, it's very complicated, but it just defines this ability scheme, to define. So it's determined by the, the representation. So the model room will model room. I just need more. Two minutes. 
of some surface breadth. <coughs> oh, sorry, this would be the, not this, but the cohomology. <coughs> cohomology of this. And then this thing should be the cohomology, some kind of cohomology of this. So some kind of very wide dream would be uh, the other conjectures on the conjecture on a beyond, beyond on conjecture beyond endoscopy. So on the decomposition on the spectral <coughs> side, especially when you apply these kind of operators, have some kind of bones in the area. How, how can shoot? Can be translated into questions of the stabilities of stability of cohomology of rate. So, this kind of question is, um, is quite familiar to topologies, I mean, it's not this unknown. And recently, I've been quite a bit, a bit pushed, even by German by Church. <laughs> and they have their own set technique to, 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 to solve the kind of questions. But now the problem is, I think it's really to, to try to write this, the conjecture that we may know on the spectral side in somehow in, in green way. Yeah. That may have to match with the. Which condition? Sorry? Which condition? So, when the you, you put this psi. So some psi on the spectral side to uh, trace formula. And then you want to, so it's the sum of L function, the integral of L function. <coughs> you don't have to complicate this. But then you want to write this as a sum of subgroups. I mean, the L function is just, that depend on the group receiving the parameter, depend on this, only on the smallest group. Group. So you want to write the, the spectral side and another sum on, on smaller group. And then we match it up and try to, to, to compare with this. So I think now the main difficulties you really you do not have uh, clean conjectures. Of course, the, what they what people in topology do is is barely enough because they uh, but I, uh, but if they're the only way, only way to compare and to write conjectures in, in the in the in a clean way, it has been done an endoscopy. So as long as you do not have these conditions through the clean way, there's no way to, to progress. Okay. Yeah, so question for Bauta. So how about SL2 case? Yes, it's like this. Can we work out? In SL2 case, I try to, to write things in the... I mean, the SL2K should be driving in, in, in a clean answer. That is another problem. The SL2K problem is that it should be able to, once, um, once uh, um, the connector is written, maybe it should be able to do it. So uh, in your paper, Frank, also you have this uh, rate of geometrization. Yes, so in the paper, that is function. So that was what I tried to do. And we had uh, tried to, to write down, but somehow I, I was not confident enough. I couldn't. I wanted to write things up to something. But the point is, you need to write a complete formula, not to up or to something. Right? And then I thought I, so I, I lost some confidence on spectral side to do it. So. But it, is this free group uh, somehow related to geometry? Right? It's, it's not yet in somehow in the, what in the, the geometric level do, but it, I mean, at least it's, it's really uh, very. I mean, it's not an open to what is. It's about understanding this I, this push forward, right? and 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 somehow the the, the whole fundamental lemma tell you that this whole push forward is controlled by sort of representation of great group, complicated representation. 
and now the, the, the whole transformation should be a cohomology of that representation in some sense. So it's uh, no further question. Let's thank the speaker.